ever wish you could walk around inside of your favorite TV and movie homes? Well, on this channel, you can. Today, we'll be exploring every nook and cranny of Jerry's apartment from Seinfeld, with ceilings in all four walls, so it feels like a real home. Recently, the internet posed this question. Could Jerry's hallway actually exist in real life? Well, I've got the answers for you, and there's more to it than just an impossible hallway. A lot more. And to prove the point, I brought the receipts. Hi, I'm Rena Coates. I have a degree in architecture and an obsession with set design. Welcome to Behind the Scenes, where we get up close and personal with all your favorite TV and movie homes. Today, we're exploring every square inch of Jerry's apartment, with ceilings in all four walls. Even the actors themselves never got to see it like this. Let's get started. We'll begin with an overhead view to help us get our bearings. This is the entrance. The dining area was here. The nook with Jerry's computer was over here. This is where the kitchen was located. This is the living room area. And here's what's called the fourth wall. That's the wall that we never get to see because it's where they place the cameras and where the audience is. But you'll get to see it today. Back here was the bathroom. And Jerry's bedroom was over here. The kitchen. We'll start with the kitchen. And by the way, since the set changed over the course of the series, I had to pick a season and then stick with it. I chose season four. This is the angle we usually see of the kitchen. The fridge was here, the sink here, the stovetop here, with a couple stools sitting in front of the island. In a few scenes, we catch just a glimpse of the wall as it extends to the right of the kitchen. You'll get to see all of it in the upcoming full tour. I discovered something interesting. Jerry didn't have an oven. There are only two possible places it could be hidden, either under this cooktop or over here. We can see all the rest of the cupboards. However, in this episode, we see Kramer opening a door to a cabinet here, looking for a blender, so there could be no oven there. And in this episode, Jerry opens a cupboard door underneath the cooktop and pulls out a bottle of Hennigan's. So, no oven there either. We never even see a toaster oven. Here's another interesting thing I discovered. I thought this corner was at a 90 degree angle. But as I drew up the kitchen, I couldn't get it to lay out right. That is, until I found this overhead view and realized that this wall angles out. Once I made that change, it all came together, just as it was on the set. But it does leave this corner with an odd-shaped wedge of a countertop. We just never really get to see that on the show. Scenes that took place in the kitchen. Kramer proudly demonstrating how thin he can slice his deli meat. Jerry's questionable kitchen remodel that significantly limits interaction with others. And everyone, but especially Kramer, helping themselves to all of Jerry's food. Let's tour just the kitchen now. I won't show you the fourth wall yet, but don't worry, you'll get to see it later on when we do the fold tour. The nook. I love when TV homes have a nook in the background. It adds a little intrigue. It always draws me in. Makes me want to go over there and examine it. Jerry's apartment is no exception. It was one of the first things I wanted to explore. Jerry's nook had a desk with a computer here and a bookshelf here, though it moved around a lot. His artwork on this wall changed over time 
as it also did on the other walls, just like it would in a real apartment. I'll have a link below to a page of some of the artwork and other items in the apartment that I identified. Scenes that took place in the nook. George frantically yelling down to the people below as he fails miserably at moving cars. Jerry discovering to his embarrassment and dismay that his new but defective phone allows the parties on both lines to hear everything he's saying. And Kramer's poorly installed discount air conditioner falling out the window, with Kramer nearly falling out after it. We didn't get to see much of this space, so it's fun to finally get a good look around. The living room. Jerry's living room had a comfy denim sofa here with a matching armchair on this side and a coffee table here. Directly behind the sofa was the dining table and a large bookcase that also housed his stereo system. There was a TV in this corner which backs up against the fourth wall and in this shot we catch a glimpse of the wall behind the armchair. Scenes that took place in the living room. George and Jerry working on the script for their pilot, but exhibiting a severe lack of motivation. George's date hearing Elaine laugh and recognizing it's the same laugh that had earlier interrupted her piano recital. And Poppy leaving a suspicious stain on Jerry's sofa. We'll tour the main living area now. Later, we'll take a tour of the entire apartment. The bathroom. We didn't get to see much of this space, but in season five we get a close-up when Newman goes into Jerry's bathroom to find evidence that he's seeing a new barber. Early on in the series, the bathtub was right under the window, but shortly afterwards the tub was moved to the side and a pedestal sink was placed here. The placement of the bathroom window would put it here. We see another building across from the window when we look out. But this doesn't make sense from what we're shown on the exterior. The exterior shot shows buildings right up against Jerry's building on either side. One possible scenario is that there could be an inner courtyard hidden from the street. We'll just have to assume this to make it work in our brains. We know that there had to be a toilet over here. We also know that Jerry had a bathroom scale on that side. We learned that in the episode, The Nonfat Yogurt, when Elaine and Jerry run in to check their weight after realizing the yogurt they'd been consuming was not non-fat as advertised. They both run this way to get to the scale. We'll take a tour of just the bathroom now.
the bedroom. Here's another room that we don't get to see very much of. In seasons four and five, Jerry's bedroom furniture looked like this. Later on, by season seven, it had changed completely. We learned from this shot that there must be a window with blinds across from the bed, so I put one on this wall. Since they had a window in the bathroom on this same wall, I figured, why not? In actuality, there would be a solid wall there. But we'll just pretend that the incongruity works and give them a view here as well. Jerry's bedroom is another room that can't actually exist the way it is shown. Here's an overhead shot to illustrate exactly what I mean. If it was here, as it's shown to us on TV, it would jet way out past the window in the nook. It wouldn't be flat as it's shown on the exterior, and it would be seen from the nook window, which it isn't. This is very common for TV homes. Most can't exist as they are shown. In fact, of the 30 TV and movie homes I've done so far, not one of them has matched the exterior. Some are more comically off than others. You can find some great books and sites online where people draw up these homes in a way that they could actually be built with 90 degree angles. But on TV sets, they often splay out the walls so it's easier for filming. On this channel, I draw them up the way they were shown to us on TV so that as we walk through them, they'll look exactly how we remember them. We'll tour Jerry's bedroom now, and then we'll examine the hallway outside of his front door. After that, we'll take a tour of the entire apartment in one single walkthrough. This is just one possible scenario for the layout of Jerry's bedroom. We aren't shown enough of it to really pin down where everything would be. Let me know your ideas in the comments below of how you might lay out this room. The hallway. I'm guessing most of you have seen articles about that wonky hallway, how the angle of the hallway doesn't really make sense with the interior. In fact, it would slice right through the kitchen. Well, truth be told, there's even more to it than that. Look at these screen grabs from season three in the episode entitled The Coma. We see Jerry exit his apartment here. Then we see his next door neighbor exit here which means Jerry's apartment would end here, which means the entire length of his kitchen, plus the bit of wall that we can see after that, would all have to end by this point. At this angle, and knowing that his door is three feet wide, the very most this could be is eight feet long, and that's really pushing it. But when we check on the inside, the length from here to the end of his apartment is over 20 feet long. So, not very likely. We'll tour the entire apartment now, and this time, we'll come in right through the front door just like one of the gang. By the way, as we go through it, look carefully for the Easter eggs that I've planted around the apartment. Easter eggs are iconic items from specific episodes that big fans of the show will likely recognize. I'll reveal them at the end, along with the total square feet of the apartment and the cost in today's dollars. What exactly was the magic of this show? Why did it become a classic? Well, it was very well written, and the casting and acting were both superb. Although that alone should carry a show, it often doesn't. Audiences are fickle, and networks don't always know a good thing when they see it. So what was it? Why did this work? Why this particular show? We could point to the iconic lines that have made their way into our daily lexicon, re-gifting, double-dipping, yada, yada, yada. We could attribute it to the novel format, remember? 
they billed it as a show about nothing. And there were definitely memorable characters. The close talker, the psychotic opera clown, man hands. But none of those things really get to the heart of the matter. And if we're being honest, the main characters were actually pretty flawed human beings, undoubtedly funny, but frequently self-centered, finicky, and a bit neurotic, and yet somehow also endearing. That's a hard task for writers and actors to accomplish, to make people that are so obviously flawed likable. So why did it work? Well, here's one theory. It's like when Michael Scott from the TV series The Office once somewhat pathetically said, I love inside jokes. I'd love to be part of one someday. That's what Seinfeld did for us each week. We became in on the inside joke. They invited us into their world of implausible situations, over-the-top characters, and endless running gags. We became part of their world, flawed as it was. And we wanted a group of friends like that. Jerry, George, Elaine, and Kramer felt safe together. They could say what they were really thinking and feeling. Out in the real world, they often had to pretend to be something they were not. But here, here they were safe. And we got to feel a part of that. We wanted that kind of friendship, free from how we sometimes feel pressure to present ourselves to the world as something other than we are. Each week, we got to step away from that as we entered their world. And we could often relate to their thoughts and feelings. And when we couldn't, we could say, well, at least I'm not as bad as them. In one episode, Elaine invites Susan, George's fiancée, to join her to go see an exhibit at the Met. When Kramer finds out, he says, that's going to be trouble, because George's social worlds would be colliding. Kramer put it this way, this world here is George's sanctuary. If Susan comes into contact with this world, his worlds collide. And you know what happens then? And he imitated an explosion. It was a closely guarded world that those four had, an exclusive club. In fact, Jerry Seinfeld said to the cast at the finale, for the rest of our lives, when someone thinks of one of us, they'll think of all four of us. And isn't that true? Those four, their world, their sanctuary, and ours too. We were part of the gang. Now for the Easter egg reveal. A box of juji fruits, like the ones Elaine took the time to buy from the concession stand after hearing her boyfriend had been in an accident and before heading to the hospital to see him. A bag of pretzels, as in, these pretzels are making me thirsty. The Time magazine cover with the fugitive on the front, who George taunted at the airport and paid for later. A box of junior mints, like the ones Kramer was holding when one fell into the patient's abdomen on the operating table. And Kramer's coffee table book, on the coffee table, naturally. Now take a guess at the square feet of the apartment and the cost in today's dollars. I happen to find the exact address of the apartment building that we're told Jerry lives at on the show. And what an apartment there this size currently rents for. And now the big reveal. How close did you get? Let me know what TV or movie homes you would like to see next. But as for today, that's a wrap. See you next time on Behind the Scenes.